It's the edition of the Brazil Korean Forum. My name is Rodrigo Higgi, and I am one of the coordinators of the Brazil Korean Forum. At this moment, I would like to thank to the SKKU team, in special Professor Kim here, Unicino team, and the AGT Micron team for accepting our invitation to participate in this event. So, Unicino has elected South Korea as a strategic partner, so maintaining a partnership with dozens of institutions in that country for more than 10 years. In this way, the Brazil-Korea Forum is a traditional international event that celebrates the partnership of research, science, and innovation between the Brazil and Korea, together with other partners such as USA and Germany that have joined us in cooperation along the time. So, since 2011, the Forum has been active in the education and training of students and professors, focusing mainly on the topic of semiconductors and its extension to Internet of Things, sustainability, and healthcare areas. The partnership between Brazil and Korea is fruitful and has already resulted in the creation of the Semiconductors Technological Institute at Unicinos, as well as in a close academic mobility at both undergraduate and postdoctoral levels. This year, the Brazil-Korea Forum takes place entirely in a virtual mode through a cluster of workshops and panels. So, at this moment, I would like to invite all participants to watch a short video <coughs> of the main achievements of the Brazil-Korean partnership. Com sua primeira edição em 2011, o Fórum Brasil-Coreia consolida uma parceria de quase uma década entre Unicinos e Instituto da Coreia do Sul, com o principal objetivo de compartilhar conhecimento entre pesquisadores na área da tecnologia. O evento estimula a inovação e desenvolvimento de produtos. Desde sua criação, o fórum teve como principal tema a cadeia de semicondutores, a partir das relações criadas entre os países com o protagonismo da Unicinos, a área se consolidou com a instalação da empresa HT Micron no Tecnocinos. Ao longo dos anos, o fórum possibilitou diversas oportunidades para a comunidade acadêmica, desde publicações científicas conjuntas, ações de mobilidade estudantil, dupla titulação na pós-graduação, projetos de pesquisa no âmbito da indústria 4.0, até a capacitação de recursos humanos para o setor tecnológico. As conquistas do Fórum Brasil-Coreia se ampliaram com o tempo e mudaram parte da matriz econômica da região. Além do estímulo às startups na área de saúde e tecnologia, o Fórum possibilitou a criação do Instituto Tecnológico de Semicondutores ITT Chip, a partir dos programas de pós-graduação em engenharia elétrica e computação aplicada. Em 2019, a integração entre pesquisadores brasileiros e coreanos, ITT Chip e HT Micron, criou um marco importante para a área no Brasil, primeiro chip semicondutor para o mercado de internet das coisas projetado no país. A perspectiva de uma expansão e consolidação das suas relações internacionais Unicinos mantém uma contínua ampliação do fórum com a participação de países como Estados Unidos, Alemanha, Austrália, entre outros. Um movimento estratégico que torna o pioneirismo uma tradição, fazendo da inovação uma cultura que a Unicinos, universidades brasileiras e coreanas, ter público e empresas constroem agindo localmente e pensando globalmente. So, for this uh, evening here in Brazil and morning in South Korea, we will have a panel entitled Diagnostic Device for Healthcare, and the mediator for this panel will be Professor uh, William Hasenkamp, who works at the uh, AGT Micron Semiconductors. Please, uh, Professor William, the token is with you. Hello, guys. Good evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you all here. 
Um, I hope you enjoy very much this uh, presentation. And uh, to the people are gonna talk here that the topics are really, really exciting and very advanced level uh, things that will be shown. Just to, in a summary, what's gonna happen this evening, we're gonna have a presentation by S. Kakao from uh, Professor Kim and followed by Yo and then Ariadna, which is a former uh, uh, Unisinus uh, student and now a PhD student uh, at uh, SKKU University. Afterwards, we're gonna have a presentation from ITT Chip, followed by a presentation from, from uh, Jefferson, uh, which is uh, from a company uh, nearby, and also a, a presentation from from the Lab on the Chip group uh, uh, from Priscilla. Just so to start, we're gonna start with a very very interesting topic. I like it very much. Uh, Professor Kim, please, uh, you can start. Thank you so much for your nice introduction of our site. And uh, I'm very happy to be here for Korean Brazil Forum. And uh, two years ago, uh, I've been to Unisimos for this kind of uh, Korean Brazil Forum. But unfortunately, uh, due to the COVID-19 and this year, and just we can have a conference forum, a conference call, uh, for Korean Brazil Forum. So anyway, uh, I want to introduce our lab for research topics related to diagnostic device for health care. And I give us some brief introduction of our lab for these topics, and then in details, information given by uh, Hyun and uh, Ariadna. So uh, today's agenda is uh, introduction of our lab uh, to you by myself and uh, such topics, and also, and uh, following by me and the uh, Hyun will give uh, uh, previous researches and the COVID-19 device we are we allow research for COVID-19 detection systems by sensors. And uh, lastly, Ariadna shall give uh, uh, previous researches on coagulation of blood. And uh, now she is developing flexible device systems. So this is uh, our, our, our side agenda for this Korea Bright Forum. Uh, this is the introduction of our lab, and uh, our lab is a nano electronics microfluidic sensors. So, my lab has uh, two main topics. The first one is electronics device. So, include the semiconductor device fabrication technologies. Uh, we can make a, a design of some circuitries with the simplum transistors, and also. The main topic of our lab is biosensors. So these guys, uh, Hyun and Ari, is now working for the development of biosensors. And uh, in Korean, uh, didn't in Korean, but any anyway, this is the location of our lab and uh, my name in Korean. Uh, and uh, uh, these are my lab members and uh, almost seven PhD course and uh, eight master's course and the two plus alpha and uh, some more undergraduate stu students are working for the development of biosensors and semiconductor device. So until now, and actually I think I didn't in, in this, this section say that more than one third papers are published 
probado la data. And the today's topic is related to biosensors and simple transistors and the last clip. And the we allow design the PFT socket for a special purpose for display engineering. A few years ago, uh, we are collaborating with uh, LG Chemistry, and uh, the company wanted to develop a PCR system, so called the Revenant chip systems. So we are integrated all systems of cell ICs and the PCR and the uh, sensing parts are scaled down and integrated into the one device. So successfully, it was developed. And uh, we are uh, the same, exactly the same uh, images of these figures. So actually, this is a picture of our developed device. And I hope it, uh, the animation Animations. will work. And the uh, first part is the cell ISIS. So if we put uh, some samples into the inlet, and uh, then the cell can be realized in this part with uh, some electrochemical reactions, we we'll apply the bias to, to electrode, and then move to the PCR parts. And then around the 25 cycles here, the 25 cycles of PCR, and then move to the, the sensing parts. And finally, we are move to the amplimetric detection parts, and then With a combination of these cell ICs, PCR, and the sensing parts, and all parts are integrated with the same substrate, and the, uh, the Lebanon chip was successfully developed by our lab members. And in details, this slide shows a cell ICs part, and the, with the, the this kind of DT systems, and just apply the bias between two electrodes, and uh, uh, using the, this microchannel systems, and uh, successfully the cells are light like this. In, in this case, we are we used uh, MCF 10A cells, that is a uh, uh, cells, and the uh, normal cell and the uh, breast cancer cell. We are developing the how can we sense the tumor cells. So uh, this slide shows uh, the cell lysis. And then there is uh, the PCR parts. And uh, individually developed for cell lysis and the PCR chips. So it is very difficult to control the temperature. Uh, as you know, we need uh, three different temperature zones to develop the PCR. So, uh, penetrations and annealing and extension, these zones should have a different temperature zones. So, in order to control the temperatures, we use uh, ITO heaters. So, the heater system and the microfluidic system, all parts are integrated with the same substrate and with the uh, micro microfabrication technologies. And uh, the, the remaining part is an uh, amplimetric detection part, and uh, that is uh, our designed T-injector systems for amplimetric detectors. So if we put the, our samples into this inlet, and then we apply the bias to the vertical lines, and then the samples move to the T injector junctions, and then we apply the, the this bias, and then the analyze goes to travel these microfluidic channels, and then the traveling time from here to here, and it depends on the charges and masses 
of the rare arrays. So within a specific times, the analyze goes by the sense sensing part. And finally, we can put all systems into the same uh, substrate uh, as I've shown in the previously. So all these parts are integrated in the same parts. So the, from the cell ICs and then move to the PCR chip and, and then going move to the, the sensor part with the implemented detection. So if we put the samples into inlet and directly moving, moving with the electric, electric field systems and the moving from cell ICs, PCR, and the CAD, and then uh, we can put out from the outlet. So all parts are integrated into the same uh, substrate systems, and uh, uh, it works very well. And uh, this is ongoing process, ongoing research topics with other collaborators. And uh, this is uh, some collaboration systems inside the SKKU. So our lab is uh, working with a uh, medical school and uh, the material science engineering. So we are now developing the Parkinson's disease biomarkers. So these biomarkers are researched by the uh, medical school, and then we fabricate the, the biosensor platform. And the new materials are developed by the material science parts. And then, so we are to develop the new biomarker sensing system for Parkinson's disease. This is an ongoing project with the medical school in SKKU. And uh, one more research topic is related to, to Samsung Medical, Medical Center, uh, so-called SMC. So that is a, the Samsung Hospital, actually. So this uh, handheld type sensors should be uh, developed, and uh, this is related to carbapenem gene. Carbapenem gene is uh, some, uh, it is uh, one of the topics proposed by the Samsung Medical, Medical Hospital, and uh, we are going to develop the, the these uh, carbapenem gene detection systems, collaborate with the uh, Samsung Hospital. And uh, the other topic is related to symptom registers, and uh, basically that is the semiconductors. So one of the semiconducting device, our main focus is the symptom registers. And uh, that is very useful for, for flexible substrates, and uh, it can be combined with a biosensor platform system for circuitries. So using a sensor platform systems, when we integrate with uh, this kind of thin film transistor circuits, and it is possible to design the sensing signal processing and then uh, transmit the signals to the cell phone or, or uh, multiple computer systems. So, I want to develop this kind of thin film transistor circuits for the use of the displays and also the by sensor platform systems. So now and now Ari is wanting to develop the, this kind of implementation circuitry for the integration of biosensor platforms. And also uh, one of the our uh, research topics related to the TFT based circuit. And recently uh, we are collaborating with uh, Samsung Electronics for the development of uh, microLED TV system. So in these systems, the circuitry was developed by our lab. So we designed the, the TFT circuitries and then the Samsung 
electronics uh, use uh, our designed circuitry for their new microLED TV systems. So these are all for the introduction of our lab. So continue to by me and the phone and the Ari Ariaduna will give uh, presentations for the relation uh, to biosensor systems. Okay. Question. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ruben. Uh, today I'm going to talk about DNA sensor device, which is continued to Professor introduction of our Doctor degree combined combined fourth year, and uh, my research topic is about sensor device fabrication, analysis, and diagnostic of uh, cancer related gene related gene, which is CP55, and also I work with infection disease genes. Uh, now I'm working with COVID-19 and kappa venom. Which professor introduced? So first of all, I will talk about graphene-based DNA sensor, which I have two related article. This one, uh, the is a briefly introduction. If you guys need more information, you guys can just search the article. And this is my structure of the graphene. FVT transistor sensor, which is can detect CP55 DNA. The reason why I use graphene, graphene has a significantly applied in advanced study since the uh, its discovery. Currently, currently, graphene is the most popular two-dimensional material that has no band gap, has strong ambipolar electric field effect and can man maintain high quality and stability in surrounding environments. So based off this uh, graphene FET based DNA sensor, this is my structure and this one, this structure uh, is the source drain and gate gold electrode were deposited on the bare glass. Then the CVD grown graphene was transferred in transferred here. Uh, then finally the PDM, PDMS microfluidic channel was integrated, which was not only working as a channel but also as an insulator layer to prevent the leak current caused by stored electrolyte. Mm, the PDMS channel was made uh, uh, designed by microfluid, the, uh, microfluidic and photolithography, and the buffer solution we use the PPS solution. So this is the characteristic of our uh, graphene transfer uh, material. Uh, to the uh, which calls Dirac point. This is Dirac point of the graphene. graphene. So the transfer process involves different conditions for different <coughs> time depending on the pro procedure. Due to these conditions, damage or dog effects on the graphene surface are factors that may charge the material properties. The first method in which graphene ha was individually transferred to each electrode pair. In this case, after measuring each channel, the drop point was not was not constant. It has 40 around 40 millivolt uh, of error bar. In contrast, cut graphene was 
transferred overall the electrode pairs and the error range between zero point was less than one millivolt. So this is the target of our uh, device. So we use TP55, which is provides instruction for making a protein called Tumor Protein TP55. Uh, this protein acts the tumor in a tumor suppressor, which means that it regulates cell division by keep selling uh, from growing and dividing too fast or uh, an uncontrolled way. So the T55 gene is the most frequently mutated gene in human cancer and indicates um, the crucial role of in pretend, uh, preventing cancer formation. This uh, page shows the mechanism or to detect DNA using graphene FET based. The electrical property of negative charge, charge of DNA can be observed in uh, graphene FET sensor through the Dirac point currents due to uh, the graphene bipolarity. The accumulate ion over the graphene surface change the material channel conductance. Then the voltage is applied to gate terminal and negative DNA charges increase the ion concentration over the graphene charging its channel conductance. In a initial uh, electrical properties of the device, which verifies the Dirac point value, the negative charge of backbone, DNA backbone is docked to graphene while the probe DNA is immobilized over the bare graphene. Due to this doping effect, the zero point shift toward to the negative value. Then the complementary complementary DNA and one mismatch and non-complementary DNA were hybrid to the the uh, the pro DNA, and then it shift due to the negative charge of the DNA, which uh, the direct point of the complementary DNA was also negatively shifted, so it shifted to left side. And however, no shift was observed in direct point when the one mismatched DNA and non-complementary DNA were used, since they do not bind to the protein. So this slide shows the result of real measurement. Uh, complementary DNA starts uh, 1.1, around 1.1 voltage, but after it um, hybridized with complementary DNA, it shifts to left uh, negative side. And however, non one mismatch and non-complementary didn't move didn't shift, direct point didn't shift. Also, we can see the linearity of the uh, measurement of measurement by the concentration. We can see the linearity of not complementary DNA, but no <coughs> uh, characteristic with one mismatch and non-complementary DNA. Uh, this now, this is my second topic about COVID-19 device. This is <clears throat> ongoing progress. So I will just talk about br briefly about this uh, COVID-19 device. <clears throat> In this study, <clears throat> we, we report an electrochemical biosensor based on RPA for the rapid and accurate detection of SARS-CoV-2. The 
electrochemical biosensor based on molecular electrode array microchip comprise reference electrode reference electrode, working electrode, and counter electrode. Uh, that allow, and also we allow the DPV changement of the DNA after DNA uh, detection. The RPA reaction is constant temperature involved hybridization of RPA antipone with thiol modified primer that were immobilized on the working electrode, which leads to reduce the current density as the amplicon increases. Uh, in addition, this technique has limitation in developing countries and field, situation, field situations because of poor resources and lack of specialized personnel. Meanwhile, uh, isosomal amplification technique such as RPA and LAMP is alternated method that features high sensitivity, specificity, and rapidly under isosomal conditions. So this is briefly talked about my second uh, topic. Thank you. Oh, hello everyone, my name is Ariadna. I am the last year presenter from SKKU team. So I'm previous student from Unisinus. And uh, fr from 2017, I had the opportunity to do my dual master degree in Unisinus and SKKU. So I will talk about uh, a little about my research topics that is focused on the device for bio applications. Uh, usually, uh, I was from, uh, my degree actually is energy engineering, but in the master course and PhD, I changed to electrical engineering, and I learned about graphene after coming to SKKU, thanks to Professor Kim and my colleague Hyun. They teach me a lot about graphene, and I have the opportunity to introduce that to Itetechi when I was there. And I finished my master's degree in 2019, and now I'm doing the PhD here in Song Yunkwan after the invitation of Professor Kim. And we are, uh, my bio team here in, my, in the lab has only two persons, me and Hyo. <laughs> so we work hard to try to develop as much as we can, because as Professor Kim introduced, mm -hmm. our lab is based mostly on TFT focus. And you can see here the publication I did when I was master's student. I developed a, a graphene-based device to monitor the coagulation process. And it was a collaboration between SKKU and Unisinus. Professor William, that is here today with us in, the, in this conference, he, he was my advisor in Unisinus, and Professor Kim was my advisor in SKKU for the master's degree. So basically, this is the structure of my device. It's a really simple structure, but the result that I got from this device is really valuable for the coagulation field because I was evaluating the electrical properties of the blood during the coagulation because, uh, as expected, we observe uh, many differences in the charge balance during the coagulation, and we could evaluate different levels of uh, the Factors that affect the coagulation, like the, the one that accelerate the process and the one that slow the process too. So my colleague Hyun, she introduced the graphene. So there is the direct point. And when there is charge over the graphene surface, the graphene uh, suffers from a doping effect. When the, there are more negative charges or positive charges, the the concentration over the graphene surface change. So here is the fabrication of the device. This is from the, the article that I mentioned. So we fabricate with the, the photolithography process uh, coupled with the evaporation uh, technique. 
So, and the graphene was transferred using the water, uh, like environment. And after that, we 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 couple with the PDMS microchannel and insert the sample and evaluate the changing the charges over the graphene using a parameter analyzer. So what I used for the experiment was human whole blood uh, without the anticoagulant effect. And I couple that with uh, some biochemicals that can affect the process of the coagulation too. Like vitamin K and thromboplastin reagent is commonly used for the proturbinant time test. And calcium and the two heparin, like enoxaparin sodium and parnaparin sodium. So I use 10 microliters of the sample in the channel and I measured the direct point. This is just a schematic of the system. So when we have neutral point, we have this first curve. It usually is around one for berry graphene with a buffer solution. And after you inject the sample, the, the transfer curve moves to the left side since the negative charges are increasing in the blood. So with the increase of negative charge due to the coagulation effect, we have increase of the doping effect of the graphene. So the direct point changes. In this case, it shifts for the left side. Um, uh, maybe Professor Priscilla can agree with me, but coagulation is a really complex system. I took maybe six months to understand that. Well, I studied a lot about that. And so to try to explain why my work was valuable for the electrical properties of the blood, I had to identify which factors are more effective over the the process, the hemostasis process. So this is just one one pathway of the coagulation. Is the fastest uh, pathway, the extrinsic pathway. So after we have, for example, you cut your finger, so you have tissue factor exposed uh, inside your blood vessel. So it activates the factor seven and for so on, and then we have the formation of Prothrombin and then the thrombin is converted, and then we, with the formation of fibrin monomers, we can do the cross-linked fibrin clot. But the point is, each factor of this process has a negative and positive charge, and during this process, these charges combine each other and uh, makes the the charge balance more stable. And then we can detect the uh, the direct point will not change anymore after the clots totally form it. So with activators and inhibitors, I could detect the if the process was low or faster than normal. Here is the direct point value for different uh, combination of solution like first blood, only blood, raw blood. So you can see the direct points around 0.5, 0.45. And then I add vitamin K, trop, uh, uh, trombo, the thromboplastin reagent, and calcium and two heparins. So vitamin K and thromboplastin uh, reagent, they accelerate the process. So the direct point was much lower, so the shift was much bigger to the left side. And for calcium, pro, the, it also accelerates process, but it's not effective as vitamin K or the re reagent. And for heparin, the is kind of inhibitor of the process, so it slows down the shift of the drug point. You can see here the transfer curve, and these points that I pick in the transfer curve are showing this graph I just left for bar graph. And during the monitoring of the hemostase, we have uh, I did for zero minutes to 60 minutes to show the stabilization. Actually, after 10 minutes, the direct point doesn't shift anymore, but I keep doing the experiment on 60 minutes to be sure that of the stabilization of the doping effect. And there was no change anymore after 60 minutes, and you can see the, the delta of the direct point here for each case. And we have also two different samples that were evaluated by stress. 
when we apply the fixed value in the drain and the gate, the voltage value, the bias, and we measure the drain current by 50 minutes. And uh, this is just to show that different blood samples, we have different uh, response for the, this kind of measurement because we have different uh, level of factors for each human being. So you can see that sample A was much faster than, uh, was much slower than sample B for stabilization based on the curvature of the drain current. Uh, here I want to talk about uh, my time when I was in the last semester of the master degree. I was working in the internship with, uh, for my final defense about the coagulation device. And I had the opportunity to co collaborate with Yara and Angelica. They are researchers in the internship. And they let me, I, I am grateful to them because thanks to them I learned how to do inkjet printing there. And I had the opportunity to do electrical characterization of their printed device. They developed nanoparticle silver ink unicinus and they used the dimatic print to, to print these different shapes. We proposed different kind of shapes for the two, electro, two electrode system. And this is the impedance value of each device proposed here, the design. And for two kinds of silver ink that they developed, they synthesized. And the best one was the, six, the, the design number six, that is this one presented in this image. Mm -hmm. And the best thing was the i7 type. So you can check this publication too. And uh, nowadays I'm working with inkjet printed device here. And we are uh, slowly developing a full uh, bio device. So I want to develop the flexible device and then the electrical system for measurement and communication with smartphone. So we are still evaluating the, the, the printed device uh, electrical properties. And this is just the one the schematic of one simple device that we use in our lab with a three electrode system. We have working electrode in the middle, counter, and the reference electrode. This is a TI gold uh, material, and then the reference is just silver. And here's just one of the results using different treatment over the working electrode, like golden nanoparticles and graphene oxide. And we are evaluating using different electrochemical measurements like DPV, CV, and amperometry. And also nowadays I'm, uh, fin I'm finalizing my next paper that is about the lactate detection. So we developed uh, a graphene-based uh, device again, but uh, Hyun presented before is really similar to her structure. But in this case, we are using common gate for this structure. And I propose a kind of different immobilization metrics to detect the lactate to guarantee that the enzyme is stable over the active layer. And here is the reaction that is occurring when uh, the lactic acid that is containing in the fluid body uh, is in contact with the enzyme. Then pyruvic acid is formed, and then there is a doping effect of the graphene during this, this product. And then we have the shift again, and the linearity of the concentration with the direct point. Unfortunately, I can't show more of this result because we are, the work is, uh, in pro the publication is in progress. And I would like to thank you, Professor Kim, for this opportunity to talk about the lactate. We developed this last semester. And also Professor Priscilla and my colleague Julia in Brazil, they teach me a lot about lactate when I was in my last semester of master degree. So thanks to them, I can understand what is happening here. Because as I said before, my background is energy engineering. And I would like to thank you for the invitation for this forum. And if you want to know more about our lab, you can use this QR code and access our, our website. There is publications. And if you want to come to SKU, you can ask us too.
So thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kim, Kion, and Ariadna for the presentation. Uh, I don't know how these things work. Nobody told me if they, we would have a questions or not. But as you know me, I'm very, very curious. And just in the spotlight, by the way, are you trying to use the active layers of the organic LEDs that you are doing to do some light detection using this kind of device? Uh, my device? Yeah. Or not yet? Well, uh, not yet. Okay. Right. We are just um, studying about that. But basically, our sensor system is based on electrochemical detections. So, for the fluorescence images, something like that, and uh, as, as you suggested, you know, and, uh, it is good to development of some uh, uh, LEDs or some uh, uh, detectors, photo detectors. But uh, anyway, very difficult to fabricate the LED by our lab. So now we are focusing just on the electrochemical detections and based on the electrical signals with the label field. OK. Well, thank you. Thank you again very, very much for the presentation. Uh, I'm very excited about those topics. I really, I really enjoy. So well, me, all, all, all research are thanks to your efforts and the, your collaborations. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> always try to help, but well, afterwards, uh, the, 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 the students are the ones that do the job. So mm -hmm. it's, their, it's, it's, it's their merit, it's their, it's their work. But uh, I like just to, to watch now. It's, it's really, mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, with that, probably we, we can move on to the, to the next presentation. Uh, I, can, I, I would like to ask uh, Carlos to, to present about uh, ITT chip. Just uh, good, good evening. Uh, just a moment, I am trying to open the, the presentation here. No problem. Carlos, if you need any help, I'm, I have your presentation here. Well, that would be very good because I think my computer had some instabilities before I connected. Maybe there might be a problem here. OK, just, just a second, please. So basically, just before uh, Priscilla just showed the presentation, with the you know with the COVID nineteen, you are using the same approach that you are using for cancer, just a DNA DNA sequence. Uh, I <clears throat> uh, we got the DNA sequence from Samsung Hospital, so. I amplified the DNA with RPA and then use the free electrode system to detect the DNA by DPB, DPB measurement. Okay. Actually, the RPA is uh, one of the main issues for isothermal amplific amplifications. Okay. In amplification. Yeah, you you have a problem during amplification. Mm. But you can you you could do an amplification by uh, isothermal, no? Isothermal. Yes. Yes. Uh, RPA is using isothermal, which is we can use human temperature, thirty six to thirty seven degree. So it's very low. We need just very low temperature to amplify the DNA. So in the future, we can use as a wearable device. Okay. Since, 
since we are bro broken any protocols, do you are you detecting in sweat swaps? What? Uh, is it a wearable device that you are developing? Yeah, because we are using temperature, human temperature. We can amplify in human temperature. This is why we use as a wearable device. So you are trying to detect COVID-19 from the air or from the person? Uh, we collect the sample from the person and then we extract DNA and then we amplify the DNA. I got it, got it now. Thank you. And since we are broken in protocols, Ariadna, I must say that you have learned coagulation very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, um, let me... Thanks to you. <laughs> no, I'm not no, that good. Yeah. You are a great student. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Carlos, can I uh, present your slides? Please. Thank you. Okay. You are on, right? Yes, it is. So I can okay. see. Thank you very much. I also thank for the for the invitation to present here. I promise I will be very brief because this is more to put people on the same page regarding our current capabilities in the institute that have been receiving some uh, recent additions. So I will be very fast and just to show a lot of pictures. So please, can you go ahead? Uh, first, uh, some context. Uh, the video made already, please. Um, is the next one and the next one as well. This one? Yes, this, this here. Just uh, as the previous video made clear, the university had a vision, and in order to fulfill this vision, several technological institutes have been created, basically aiming to create a bridge between the innovation that normally happens in companies with the sciences and academy. And our institute, Semiconductor Institute, is one of them. Please, the next one. So we have been created in 2011. We took some time to get steam, but uh, in the recent, let's say, two years, we have increased our speed very fast uh, with a significant funding from several uh, sources. And here I stress the importance of the uh, Korean packaging company, HT Micron, in all this effort. Uh, please, the next, next, next one. Here, uh, you see there is a huge ambition, ambition attached to this uh, institute, uh, especially connect, considering that we are also connected to the um, electrical engineering uh, master program and the reliability institute. But uh, the idea is really to provide the environment as a tool for connecting and aggregating different people from different areas and uh, with the most sophisticated tools in order to provide innovative solutions. This is the next one. So uh, here is our building, please, the next one, taking a top-down approach. The next one, we have in the second floor some uh, labs that do not require uh, any controlled condition. Please. For instance, a simulation lab, which is basically used by, by the master degree students and some researchers, which provide a huge uh, spectrum of possible simulations for uh, for the researchers, please, next one. So this is also very important, the prototyping lab for the hardware and software design, mainly connected with the industry 4.0 solutions. If you remember in the video, there was an IoT application that is currently being developed by, by the HD Micron, also by our institute. And this all passes through these kind of labs. Please, the next one. Electrical test lab is mainly connected with the memory, failure detection, debugging of electronic products. Uh, the next one, basically here we have some tabletop tools. Uh, the next one, we also have a, a better tester inside the clean room of HD Micron, but I did not put here because it's more specialized. The main infrastructure of the institute is its clean room is divided in three areas according to the kind of process that is developed 
inside them. I believe this is one of the best and biggest clean rooms in Brazilian universities. So we have ISO class 8, 7 and 6. Uh, we have very good facilities in the backside of the building. I would point out that we have a, a very good water pool order system and also a scrubber. Please, next one. Here you see that the clean room design is uh, similar to a bay and chase area with a long corridor with some service corridors uh, in between the labs. But our protocol for gowning and clean room is really not so restrictive. Since we are not a production facility, we are not uh, worried about yields, but if we have one or two devices working, that's enough for us. This is the next one. Here are the main labs already completed. This is the next one. We have a surface mount technology lab, uh, which provides a complete solution for PCB design and prototyping. As we can see in the next, uh, next one, please. Here you see we can do the complete full, uh, flow for the PCB prototyping. The electrical characterization lab has already been used by some of the guys in Korea with a probe station and a very good parameter analyzer. Please, the next one. Packaging lab provides solutions for local packaging. Uh, we can do some simple processes like the encapsulation and the wire bonding processes. And we can also do the decapsulation process. Please, can you advance to? Here we see the, the tools for decapsulation. We start normally by laser decapsulation and finish the process by chemical decapsulation. The next one uh, also shows a general plasma tool for surface activation and cleaning. This is the next one. Flexible Electronics Lab is connected to that uh, project that Ariadna already talked about, the conductive inks with nanoparticles. Uh, it's actually a very good chemical lab in, we, in which we can synthesize several materials and also characterize them. Uh, please, the next. Can you f fast forward two or three of them? Yes, please, next. You see the synthesis tools and also very good set of characterization tools. Next one. Please, please, can you show the next? Thank you. Here in the photolithography lab, which is the best cleaning area, ISO class 6 area, uh, can you go back one, please? Yes, we have uh, installed this equipment this year. You have seen before a cleaning hood is a complete solution for uh, cleaning of silicon wafers with uh, the complete set of chemical solutions of RCA cleaning. And we can, can now do a programmable spin coater and hot plate for pre-baking, post-baking, and also a complete developing solution, everything programmable. This has been installed this year when we are now under the process of validating some recipes with different photoresists. So we are now doing an upgrade in our uh, manufacturing capacity for micro devices and other uh, experiments here. Please, the next one. We don't use masks usually for the photolithography process. We have a direct beam uh, writing system based on a laser beam. This may take a very long time, up to six hours, but it provides a very good accuracy and uh, also is relatively inexpensive comparing with other uh, tools that use uh, masking solutions. This is the next one. Here are some examples of uh, some process validating devices and micro devices that we have been done in the last, let's say, one month, two months in this, with this new installed equipment. Please, the next one. Finally, the last uh, laboratory to receive uh, new equipment is the microfabrication lab. We have installed a few weeks ago a sputtering system. We are now able to deposit metals and insulators in a vacuum atmosphere, very clean. Please, the next one. And we are now in the process of installing a new plasma etching tool. This tool required a lot of infrastructure from our part. We had to first install a toxic gas monitoring system 
for two gases that are toxic. And we also designed and installed a gas uh, scrubber outside the building just for this tool. And we intend to install, finish the installation in the next few weeks uh, to start doing plasma etching, which will greatly improve the, let's say, the resolution of the attacks that we can do on silicon wafers, on insulating films and other techniques that are related to the microfabrication of micro devices. Please, the next one. This is also a, the same microfabrication lab. We have a rapid thermal processor for basically for fast oxidation and for annealing processes. Okay, this uh, the next one. We are now finishing a very fast presentation. I just wanted to put everybody on the same page regarding the capabilities, providing a background for the next two presentations. Thank you. And thank you, Priscilla, for all, you, all your help. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Carlos. It was nice to see the infrastructure is improving a lot. I, I wish I could go more in the clean room and play with all these tools. I, I would feel like a kid. So uh, we can move on to the next presentation uh, with Jefferson. Uh, probably he can introduce himself and talk about uh, his work. Jefferson, the, the room is for you now. Okay, good evening. Thank you, William. Uh, William was my advisor uh, during my master degree at Unicinus. I started my uh, research uh, working with packaging of the uh, implantable uh, brain catheter. And now I'm uh, doing my PhD at uh, the Federal University, where I'm uh, trying not only to package, to, to put the, the sensor and the, uh, the dye inside a package, but also I'm trying to develop uh, the dye itself. So uh, we are uh, working on simulation, and maybe in the, in the next year we'll try to prototype and have a uh, totally uh, developed here in Brazil uh, brain pressure catheter. So I also have um, a company, a medical devices company established here in Brazil, and uh, we develop electromedical devices. And also uh, with this uh, new research, we are uh, at this time manufacturing and selling in Brazil the brain catheter that I will show to you. So let me just bring up my presentation. Okay, so the title of my master degree research is Packaging Development of an Implantable Intracranial Pressure Caster. So the traumatic brain injury is a very important cause of death. Uh, 50 million people annually leading to hospitalization or mortality, and that makes an uh, incidence of uh, 400 people per 100,000 population. I mean, these numbers refers to the global uh, information. If we analyze the development countries, the, this number could increase to 700, maybe 1,000. So we can see this is a very uh, important problem in health. So in Brazil, we have about 150,000 deaths per year uh, uh, regarding uh, TBI. And most of them are because of the traffic accidents, uh, around 50% uh, uh, accidents involving uh, motorcycles or cars in the traffic. And uh, followed by falls, uh, 30%, and 20% is uh, physical aggressions uh, because of the violence here in Brazil. So the, all the physicians, uh, when they are analyzing the, all the problems related to uh, traumatic brain injury, or maybe some other uh, pathologies, uh, cerebral pathologies, or maybe a, a brain tumor, they are interested in access the oxygen perfusion over the tissues. And to do that, they need to know the cerebral blood flow. The intracranial pressure, it's a very important information that allows the physician to calculate the cerebral perfusion pressure that you put on the calculation, the ICP and the mean arterial pressure. And with that information, you can analyze if the uh, brain is working properly regarding the oxygen perfusion or not. 
So the goal of this work is to design and test a non-standard ship packaging that allows to implant a semiconductor pressure sensor inside the brain using biocompatible materials in the form factor of a medical catheter. Here we can see some uh, different intracranial spaces. The most common is the ventricular one, where the catheter tip is inserted uh, inside the ventricle. Yeah, but also you can uh, very commonly see the intraparenchyma where the catheter tip is uh, uh, surrounded by the parenchyma. And also is, is very common here in Brazil and other countries, uh, the use of the subdural uh, version where the catheter tip is between the school and the dura mater. So this is the proposed design. Uh, I try to work only with uh, plastic materials and all the materials that is in contact with the brain tissue uh, are biocompatible. So the tubing is a TPU tube uh, in the medical grade and also the coating over the catheter tip is uh, a TPU as well. And for the plastic tip, it was used a polysulfone material that was in the first time machined but in the future, when the, this production goes to the large scale of production, this kind of uh, part could be injection molded. So inside the catheter tip, we have a FR4 a substrate with the pre pressure sensor die, a thermistor, and also uh, wire connections, so gold wires from the sensor die to the substrate, and also copper wires that translate the electrical information to the outside where the catheter is connected to a bedside monitor. With this kind of technology, it's possible to insert the catheter inside the brain, and the patient does not need to be sedated. It's common to see here in Brazil, the patient walking around the hospital with this uh, green tubing outside the, the, the brain, uh, carrying the bedside monitor and everything being monitored and uh, alarms uh, looking for some uh, uh, error or maybe some different values that could be interesting for the clinical analysis. So uh, the first step uh, on the prototyping this device was uh, attaching the dye to the substrate. For that, it was as epoxy adhesive. We can see here a vent hole because the nature of the sensor, this is a Gauss sensor. The adhesive epoxy was applied using a metal stencil and it was applied using a screen printing uh, machine that was show uh, is available inside the ITT ship labs. Here we can see the path, the standard uh, of the application of the adhesive, uh, not blocking the vent hole. And here uh, is a fixture that was specially designed to position the die and the substrate. Here the the prototype uh, part. And here we can see the sensor die that's really small inside the cavities. Because we did not have an, uh, any available die attaching machine in the lab, we decided to use a, a robot that was uh, previously used for uh, adhesive and fluids uh, dispensing. Uh, in order to use that, we attach it, we created uh, a holder for a uh, a vacuum pen that could, that with a nozzle that can uh, bring, uh, hold the die and place to the correct place. It was necessary to create something to make it this, uh, uh, the z-axis free, to not apply too much pressure over the membrane of the sensor during the the picking uh, phase of the this uh, production step. So in this video, we can see the robot uh, picking and placing the die on the correct place according to the coordinates, uh, uh, taking care to not block the vent hole. And here we can see the wire, wire bonding process. So it was used a typical wire bonding machine to uh, we used a 25 micron gold wire to connect the bonding pads to the tracks on the substrate. Here we can see in details the wire bonding. We use the ball edge uh, technique. 
And here the substrate with the sensor die, gold wires and protection for the wires. In the simulation process, we used a laser router machine. With that machine, it was possible to cut the board and have an individual portion for the final assembly. Here we can see the boards uh, separated from each other. And uh, in order to attach the external Cooper wires to the tracks on the substrate, we used uh, the sea welder machine with the thermal compression technique to attach the Cooper wires to, this, to the board. We can see here in the tail, the connection. And here, uh, the soldering uh, using the thermal compression technique. We can see here the wires are very small. The diameter is uh, 50 microns. So after the board assembling, all the sensor and board, board with wires uh, have been mounted to a plastic tip. Uh, we try to use different materials, but all plastic materials, biocompatible plastics. Uh, the clear one is polyethylamide, and the yellow one is polysulfone. And after that, we applied some soft silicone over the sensor membrane in order to encapsulate that and to provide a biocompatible uh, cover and to not uh, put in, in touch the brain tissues with the electronics inside. So this is the catheter tip uh, finalized. We can see here the substrate with the sensor and the silico soft silicon. And here there is a venti hole to connect the ambient pressure from the outside to the inside to the back part of the sensor. And here the, the, the path for the ambient pressure. Here is the final assembled product. Uh, this scatter is 70 centimeters length with a diameter of one and a half millimeter. So in order to test the device, it was necessary to create some uh, device that could simulate the brain condition. So we use this uh, water column where there is a coil here. In this coil, we circulate hot water in order to create an environment with very constant temperature along the the column and uh, with water, and we insert the catheter in this hole on the top of that. And with this setup, we can control uh, the temperature. We can simulate different body temperatures, and also the depth of the catheter tip on the water uh, represents the pressure in centimeters of water. That's a very known uh, unit of measurement used by physicians in the ICU. So we can see here uh, the complete setup for testing. The catheter inside the water column connected to a bedside monitor. This monitor has been special designed for this kind of instrumentation. So this is a special monitor only for ICP and brain temperature measurement. And also we can see the results. The first test was the zero drift. The catheter have been placed to a fixed position with 15 centimeters of water and uh, with a uh, constant temperature, 37.5 degrees Celsius. The expected result uh, at this, this test was uh, in this green uh, line here. We can see the prototype number 11. We can see a constant uh, pressure measurement along the time. Some of them, we can see a lot of variation in this uh, Try number 10, for example, we had a, a, a very uh, high increase of temperature, uh, sorry, uh, pressure measurement. This is the main problem of the proposed technology because we are we're using a plastic tip. So the second test was the temperature drift. So the, the catheters have been uh, placed to 15 centimeters of water, and it was applying a difference of temperature between the room temperature temperature and the body temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is important to analyze how it will be the increasing of the pressure measurement with the increasing of the temperature. We could, could see here in two, in two different prototypes. Uh, we can measure here about 0 0.8 and 0 0.6 
centimeter of water per gram Celsius, degree Celsius. So this information is important for the physician to understand the, the uh, relation between the, between the pressure measure and the temperature. But when you provide a proper instrumentation on the bedside monitor, for example, for example and because we have a thermistor inside the catheter tip, it's possible to measure that temperature and apply a compensation by software or maybe by ha hardware uh, to not have this uh, problem during the measurement. So the physician could see the, the correct measurement of pressure uh, independent of the changes of the temperature. Here we can see the absolute error uh, graph. We can see here a uh, behavior where some points are very close, uh, very, with very low errors. And here in this part, we could see uh, bigger errors. That's because of the protocol of the uh, that data collection, because of the problem of the zero drift. So we can see here in the beginning of the test, uh, a, a good accuracy. And after some hours, we the accuracy was not good anymore because of the, that problem mentioned before of the zero drift. So uh, the main problem of this approach was the zero drift. This, that's a problem that needs to be uh, fixed. Uh, and then probably the main problem is the different CTEs from the different materials used to encapsulate that and probably because of the plastic. Uh, I have uh, assembled some new versions of this product. The data is not informed here in this presentation, but I replaced the plastic tip substrate to a ceramic one, and now th this problem of the zero drift has been solved. I intend in the future to, to continue exploring more materials and more uh, geometry cavities in order to achieve the good result without using ceramic materials. Maybe it will be possible to achieve the good results using plastic materials. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Jefferson. It was really, really a lot of work and nice work. And of course, uh, this is one of the very first and uh, initial types of devices that are, are, are being made here in Brazil. And we are, we are doing everything by ourselves. And, and I, Jefferson is, of course, will bring such products to market. So, which is a very, very important milestone here for us in, in Brazil. And, and thank you very much. I hope you, you, are, you have been enjoying working uh, at ITT and, and in this kind of uh, problem mm -hmm. now that during the master now following up in the PhD. Yeah. Actually, my research is still going on and also inside the ITT ship. So I'm, I'm still inside the labs uh, trying to make the things working. Yeah, there are too many materials to play with. Yeah. Well, Thank you very much. And uh, with that, probably we can go through with our last presentation from the Lab on a Chip group uh, and Priscilla, please, you can maybe introduce yourself and, and do it. Yes. Um, so good night, everyone here in Brazil and good morning to everyone in Korea. It's a pleasure to be here. I was hoping to meet Korea this year and COVID didn't allow me. So it's nice to have any uh, collaboration with you. Uh, I'm a professor here at university. I'm from the health science and I'm from the health part of the university. So we invaded ITT ship is like for three years from now. And uh, I have the last speech, so I, I'm trying to be very brief and hope you stay awake with me a little more minutes. My presentation, this doesn't work. Uh, okay, you can see it, my slides now. Okay. Yes, yes. 
so I'm, I'm trying to present to you some advances that we have been doing in our research group lab ownership here at Unisins. But first, let me start saying to you what I think the future holds from lab ownership. So in the left, you can see how we do clinical pathology now. You can see a very centralized laboratory with a slow turnaround time. And this certainly impacts in how patient is care. And in the right, you can see what I think the future will be. I think we must have a lot more point of care devices that can impact in clinical decisions. If you think that sensors in health are very far from what are you living now, I must say you are wrong. We are, we are already surrounded by sensors in the healthcare. We are using sensors to detect drugs in the air. We are using sensors to detect glucose in the blood and diagnosing and prognosing people with diabetes. And we are also using sensors to detect our vital signs with any smartwatch available now. And now, finally, let me say what are we doing in the lab on a ship. We started with this project in 2017, focused on blood coagulation. And this is a, a device that is paper-based device with a visual detection of the blood coagulation process. This project now has an international patent registration in, and also has a license agreement with Biosense that is a component that they merged from this project. Also, in the blood coagulation field, Ariadna has already presented some partnership that has been done with SKKU that made possible to do an electro detection of the blood coagulation. Following that, we started enjoying do doing this and we made some progress. Now we are developing also an lactate device that focuses on sepsis screening. And just some, some numbers so you can know what I'm talking about. World Health Organization estimates that 20% of the total global deaths are sepsis related. So yeah, this is a real big thing. Also, we are working in a device that is integrated and using molecular biology to detect COVID-19. This device uses graphene and CRISPR, which is a very advanced technology. We are also working with organoids focused on developing organ on a ship and our first goal is the skin on a ship. With this kind of technology, we are hoping to reduce the use of animal in preclinical studies and also in a lot of more things. To do this, we are starting with some partnerships uh, from Northern University, but also within our university. We have some people doing very nice jobs here, as Ariadna has already presented. We have some advanced materials that are already being used in our health devices. This is an example of, of silver nanoparticles wings that has been do done by Professor Yara. And recently, as a student of ours uh, has been asked a lot, this uh, is another project that has been done with advanced materials. Some golden nano, nano, nanoparticles are being developed so we can make our bioreceptors immobilization much easier. And last but not least, let me show you what are the phases that make it all possible. We are a very large group that focus on improving healthcare, and I'm very glad to be part of that. So I'm thanking you all and hoping you have a great night. Thank you very much, Priscilla. It, it is nice it's to nice see what, what is, is going on inside the machines and different implications and everything that is being made to work different devices uh, and, and technology and and the know-how that know -how is being shared between shared. Korea and Brazil to 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 really uh, bring devices that matter to to the world. So I think this uh, what we can see here among all these different groups that are so far apart. Uh, you know uh, when you see 
location wise but at the same time we are so close together uh attacking problems from different perspectives but sharing a lot of know-how and knowledge and and students to to make the, the the world a better place let's say like that yeah i agree with you i think that one of the best qualities of our group has, is that we are multidisciplinary in the born Yeah, we bring people from from all around just to 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 join and and enjoy uh, doing those, let's say, not so crazy ideas, but uh, I would say bold. <laughs> well, uh, with that, uh, I I really uh, appreciate uh, you all, especially our our partners from Korea to this morning join our our session and our colleagues here from brazil uh taking on this during this night and showing us uh, a lot of those things that were really uh, made together so professor kim opened up the door to ariadna so she could go there and she brought here uh, new insights and, and understanding about uh, graphene transistors and things like that so i think i think we really will see many nice and great things uh, going on in the in the years to come uh, every uh, in every aspect uh, from this partnership but also i mean professor kim uh, uh, has been working on, with several devices and also here we have been doing some interesting things as well and i i think it would be very important to to celebrate uh, this this forum and this interaction that has been going on for for eight times already uh, from um, Brazil and Korea, and I don't know if uh, every uh, anyone has uh, anything to say or want to make some questions. Uh, we have a question here. We don't have you, Brent. No, I I I, th I cannot see the question. Oh, uh, the question is, I would like to ask. Uh, our panelists to comment about uh, the technology transferring. In other words, collaborations you have made in healthcare companies to test prototypes with better scalability. I start? Maybe yeah. I can start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start. It's for all of us, right? Um, as I said, I, I come from the health uh, part of your university and we had a lot of collaborations and this certainly make a lot of easier to rapidly see what uh, are the prototypes that are needed in the market and what the people are trying to, to solve, what the problems people are trying to solve and also to do the clinical studies that we have been doing since the beginning. And this certainly has accelerated a lot our researchers. And I hope we have um, a lot of more of these collaborations. So maybe all the other ones can speak a little about how do you see the collaborations with healthcare companies? Well, uh, I think I can say a few words about that because uh, probably uh, there are only, I can see, of course, more companies, but we can see the partnership between uh, HMicron with uh, IP Ship and also my company. And uh, uh, from my point of view, I can say that I started my academic research, but interested in making that uh, becoming a product. So that's what I'm doing now. So in this case, I, I went to the university to talk for, uh, to the people, uh, how could they help me? And uh, they also teach me how to do many uh, things that I did not know how to do. And now uh, I'm an example of a, a researcher and a company that has uh, taken information from the research and created a product and uh, at this time i'm selling this product in the market so i believe uh, this is uh, wonderful uh, 
here in Brazil, it's not so common to see all the time. You can see a lot of research inside the university, but not going to the company or uh, to the market. And I'm very happy to say that I'm doing this at this time. So my research, with the help of the university, ITT ship, uh, the, my advisor, William, uh, helped me to understand uh, different approaches on how to develop something. And now I can say that this is uh, a research that has become a product. And also from SKKU. You can talk. Yeah, actually, uh, we have many collaborators in Korea. And also, it is my pleasure to collaborate with the Initials members through the Ariadna. So she is uh, some bridge from SKKU and Unisinos. And uh, we are just now academic researchers only. So if some of you want to commercialize our ideas, and uh, you can uh, use our ideas for commercialization. So I think uh, Ariadna is a good bridge to, from our SKKU to Unisinos. I so, agree with you, Professor Kim. Maybe you can send her to stay a few more months with us. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> She can go back and forth, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once COVID-19 is over, I think Ariadna must come here and spend a little more month with us. <laughs> OK. <laughs> if Professor Kim not wants to. Actually, she, she spent the only one and a half, half year. One, one year? Yeah, right. One and a half, one and a half. One and a half year for kids now. So, uh, usually, it takes uh, uh, four or five days to get a PhD. So during the during the PhD course, and the, you may visit, you may come to Unisnos for I'm, some I'm trying to go to Korea, Professor Kim. COVID has not let me. I, uh -huh. I was going to BIOS 2020, and COVID uh -huh. cut me off. <laughs> At Busan. Yeah. At Busan. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope to see you at Busan. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping to. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I would like to, again to to thank you all for 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 presenting this and also for our audience to stay for for so long and also enjoying actually those all those topics. Uh, I guess emotion and really excited to see all those things for those who know me very well they know that i'm very passionate for all these kind of developments and all these micro publications and biosensors and materials everything that it has been done it's it's, it's coming it's coming all together so it's really nice to see those things uh so thank you very much and i think we're gonna end our session now. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye.